Well, welcome back to Chris's Beer Reviews. Hope you're doing really well. Today's video, we're off to Vocation Brewery for a look at one of their latest released barrel-aged, red wine barrel-aged series beers. And there was two of them that I released. I think they released them last Friday. It's certainly when I ordered mine. Did I order mine on the Friday? Who cares? It's here. Uh, so yeah, there was two. So there's the red wine barrel-aged Vocation Morello Stout. And there's also the red wine barrel aged vocation Morello Red. So we're looking at probably like a, a red ale. So there it is in the can. As you can see, it's a 330 mil. This one comes in at 8.4%. And this is the one that we're going to be reviewing today. Big fan of Vocation Brewery, as you probably well know if you watch my channel. So this one that says it's fermented with a mix of Belgian Trappist yeasts then aged with morello cherry together with a mix of the lactobacillus culture hope i pronounced that right and something that i'm not even going to try and pronounce well let's have a go bretonomyces <laughs> yeasts <laughs> i can't pronounce that i'm not even going to try again to pronounce that uh, it's matured in french red wine barrels obviously for 18 months uh, expect deep bitter notes and a sharp cherry finish so yeah there it is. So only recently released. I think this was £6.50 for the can. And I believe from looking at the website earlier, I think the stout's already sold out, but I think the Morello Red is still on there. So let's crack it open. Let's stop waffling. Let's start drinking. Let's get her in a glass. So I've got a nice vocation glass to put her in. So I think there's the fact that it's brewed with Belgian Trappist Ah, uh, Belgian Trappist, what did I say? Belgian Trappist yeast, yeah, my mind went blank then. Belgian Trappist yeast and cherry, I think it's certainly going to be like a Belgian or a Flemish red ale, as I'd imagine the route they're going down with that. So let's put that on the glass so you can see it. Uh, yeah, nice head on there. The light in here is, is really, really rubbish. So to me, it looks very dark with that one finger head that is going to start fizzling away it is it looks really really dark but i've got a sneaky feeling in the light there's probably some ready hues to that i'm gonna to have to move it out of the camera shot to hold it up to the light yeah the light in here is dreadful there is a very very slight readiness around the bottom that you're not probably not going to be able to see which is a shame but it is there so yeah that head's going so let's see how she snips Oh, God, that smells good. Mmm. It's another one of those, those beers that just makes me feel relaxed on aroma. Oh. It's got a lovely, deep, souvenir cherry, souvenir, soothing cherry to it. And red wine, it's it's really got that red wine aroma to it. And I like a red wine. I haven't had a red wine for ages, but I do enjoy a, a good quality red wine. And that just reminds me of a, a good a good quality red wine. It's almost almost prune like. And you can you're getting the a bit of a bit of the booziness to it as well. It's got, it's got the sort of dark fruits, sort of aroma going on. Definitely with that red wine drifting across the top of it with this lovely deep sort of cherry aroma going on. Oh, it just smells incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's hope it tastes as, as good as it smells. Cheers, everybody. Oh. Mm. Shit, that is good. Oh, that is incredible. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's so good. I don't even want to talk about it. I just want to drink it. Wow. 
that's a very, very well constructed beer. The cherry's tart. It's got a lovely tartness bordering on sourness. And it's just developing. It's just evolving in your mouth all the time. That cherry tartness is, is glorious. With a sweetness, there's an acidicness to it. And it rolls to the back of your palate and almost turns into a glorious red wine. It's got a deep sort of red wine dry finish to it. Which somehow works so, so well with that tartness of the cherry. I'll grab some more. Oh. It's got a lovely well-balanced carbonation to it. Oh, it's so difficult to explain this. I'm not a beer expert. I just like drinking beer and I love tasting beer and I love sharing it with you. So sometimes it takes me a while to get it right and I'd just rather be honest than, than rush on through. But it, it, um, <laughs> up in the gums, up in the front of the mouth, it's got that red wine feel to it where it starts drying your, drying your, your, your mouth out. And it does that really nicely with this lovely sweetness that turns into this cherry tartness. Oh, which just rolls across the palate into this deep red wine type of feel. Deep sort of red wine flavors. And it's got this lovely, lovely Acidiness to it, acidicness to it, and not in a bad way. It's glorious, that sort of acidic feel, mixing with the red wine and mixing with that glorious, tart, almost sour cherry. It's just bloody incredible. It should be a beer that you kick back and enjoy with, but it's so drinkable. So, so Moorish. The 8.4%, I got a bit of booziness on the aroma, but you don't get it on the, on the taste whatsoever. It just isn't there on the taste. And the mouth is just, oh, it's gonna sound a bit strange. It's, it's pinging all over the place. And that's not the carbonation. It's all the different flavors, just sort of pinging around together, but working really well together. They're not fighting against each other. Oh me. There is a however to this, it won't affect me. But if you don't like red wine, you might just struggle with this. Because you, you're getting the red wine. There's a there is a uh, not smoked. There is a woodiness, a very slight woodiness coming through now, which is probably from the, the barrels. It's been in barrels for 18 months. That's coming through now. And they do just ping around. It all just pings around in your mouth and then starts drying your mouth out like a red wine does, which probably makes you keep going back for more. I've not had a huge amount of the Flemish red ales or brown ales as they're sometimes known. It's been a long time since I've had one, but it's certainly encouraging me to go back uh, and explore more of that style or a Flanders owl, I think they're known as as well. It's been a long time and that's, this is a bit of a, a throw towards those. It's incredible. It really is incredible. But yeah, if you're not a fan of red wine, I don't think you're gonna like it. But it's glorious, it's absolutely glorious. Is it the best vocation beer? 
It's tricky because it's so different, really, in terms of the, their styles. I can't wait to do that. That, I can't wait to do. I'll do that tomorrow. The Morello Stout. Um, but that is just absolutely glorious. Absolutely glorious. Um, I've never given a beer a rating out of 10 from any of my videos. That's, that's a 10 out of 10 beer for me. It absolutely is. Or ale. Morello Red, whatever you want to call it. Never rated a single beer on my channel and I've had some fantastic beers on this channel. But I'm going to have to rate this one and it is a 10 out of 10. It's a massive, massive Chris's beer review seal of approval. It's just glorious. It's absolutely glorious. Uh, tremendous beer by Vocation. So well done, Vocation. They really do turn out some, pardon me, some good stuff. I'm done. I hope you found that useful. I think, I'm sure on their website this evening, they might have had some of those left. I'm sure the Morello Stout was definitely sold out. If there is, just go and have a look. Go and have a look right now. See if you can get yourself one. Just on the proviso that if you don't like red wine, you might not like that. £6.50 for a 330ml can. If you don't like it, it's a bit it big, big expense, isn't it? Um, but give it a go. It's incredible. Would I recommend it? It's fairly obvious. Absolutely, yes. I'm done. I'm going to go and enjoy this bit. And that's me done. Hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye now.